How's it going you guys? So in this video I want to talk a little bit about my recent glycine and GABA experiment. So recently I started to try to take glycine and GABA to try to see if I could get deeper sleep from it. Okay, so for those of you who've been following me for a while, you know that I've been eating a ketogenic slash carnivorous type of diet, a low carb diet, um, since November of 2018, so it's been over a year and a half. And that actually really helped me, that sort of really helped me to start to get to sleep. And for once in my life, I started to have a normal sleep schedule thanks to the GABA-inducing effects of uh, ketosis. Um, recently, you know, I decided to start trying to experiment with GABA supplements and glycine simply because that's, first of all, I've always had great success with any kind of herb or supplement that increases GABA. And I have kind of noticed through trial and error that um, GABA is a neurotransmitter that my brain benefits from optimizing the most. And especially since, you know, a ketogenic diet helped me start to sleep and balance out my mood, one of the mechanisms as to why it does that and why it also helps to treat epilepsy, which has been used to do so for over 100 years now, is through its mechanisms on GABA in the brain. And so I figured why not just supplement with GABA. So first of all, um, I actually have used GABA and glycine supplements to induce sleep effectively um, back before I started a ketogenic diet. So before I started a ketogenic diet, I was using about four grams of GABA and three to six grams of glycine every single night and it really helped me get amazing sleep. And this was back in early early to mid 2018. So I was experimenting with glycine and GABA back then. I was using capsules back then. Um, and it was working really well. I was having amazing sleep and I was very impressed. Um, but I was using capsules and a lot of people claim that uh, when you take GABA orally as a supplement, it does not pass the blood-brain barrier. Some people claim that uh, stomach acid destroys it and this and that. But the main thing is that it's said that GABA cannot pass the blood-brain barrier. Um, however, there's various ways of, uh, of um, optimizing its transport. And one of those would be taking GABA alongside vitamin B6. The capsules I used to take actually had vitamin B6 alongside it. So anyway, um, this is pure GABA powder from Now Foods, and I was taking about one teaspoon. Last time I tried it, I took two teaspoons, which would leave me at about eight grams, but I was trying to take four grams. Um, and I've tried a various doses of GABA, and I also was taking about, I think at first I was taking about um, eight grams of glycine. And I tried various doses of glycine. I've tried GABA without glycine as well. And um, I also was trying to experiment with this uh, Fit Powders brand Theanine. Word of caution, don't buy Theanine supplements. Don't buy supplements from brands that don't have a significant online presence, okay? There are, there are exceptions to this rule, but uh, this is fake as far as I'm concerned. It claims it's third-party it's third lab tested, but I did a reverse image search and found that the lab test results that they post uh, of this actually existed since 2015. It's just very weird, very shady, but the main thing here is um, when I took this, even at a thousand milligrams, I did not experience any re relaxation whatsoever. In fact, I started to notice I had heart palpitations and heart pains and um, there were other people that claim that they thought this is fake too. I'm sure I'm pretty sure this is fake because when I take capsules of this, I feel amazing. Um, so I'm pretty sure this is fake. Anyway, so that didn't work. Um, but regular theanine capsules do, just so you all know. If you really, yeah, theanine capsules um, from a reputable brand definitely works. Anyway. Um, this glycine powder seemed to give me runny stools, um, and it never did when I used capsules, 
This also tastes very sweet. I've heard it's been used as sweetener, although that's pretty damn expensive. Um, glycine has many other benefits other than in, uh, trying to help you sleep. One of them is balancing out the methionine to glycine ratio, um, which can counteract things like homocysteine from building up in your blood. It can help to improve collagen and longevity and things of that nature. Um, in fact, there's more, there's actually more collagen in your body than there are calcium, uh, more collagen in your bone than there is calcium. Whatever the case, okay, this video is more so about my experiment, not all the different benefits of glycine. I actually take a beef gelatin powder supplement for supplemental glycine and proline and those types of things, but um, this did not help me sleep. Uh, I tried taking GABA by itself. Um, and I think I def I think I did notice a slight relaxation, sleep-inducing effect from GABA without the glycine itself, but it didn't work the way it did before. I, I don't know why. I'm thinking maybe maybe because this is in powder form, it didn't um, absorb as well. I, I don't even think that that's the case. Um, maybe that because there's no vitamin B6 in this GABA. I mean, I had actually taken a B-complex vitamin one night alongside the GABA just to just to see. It was a li liquid B vitamin supplement because, you know, and it was a smaller dose so that I didn't cause any GI upset or nausea or anything that B vitamins can typically cause on an empty stomach. None of that really helped. So, um, I trust Now Foods brand. Like I have, looking at my cabinet, I have a shit ton of their supplements. I don't think that their supplements are fake at all. I just think that, number one, glycine can have a stimulatory effect or relaxing effect depending on the person and their body conditions, what time of day they're taking it, all other variables. That's the first thing. Second thing is GABA. Um, it's questionable whether it even passes a blood-brain barrier or not. And since I wasn't taking this with the high-dose vitamin B6 that the other supplement had came with, that could be the reason why it didn't work. Um, there could be a variety of reasons as to why it didn't work. Um, and one of the benefits that people claim that glycine helps with, I think I saw a study claiming that it helps to produce uh, serotonin and melatonin. Uh, maybe it's because I'm on a low carb diet these days and maybe I need to take you know, some carbs alongside it to help it produce a serotonin. I don't even think that that's valid. Um, whatever the case, it didn't work the way I wanted it to. So that brings me to, well, what, what has worked for me? Well, um, let's see. So I was taking the red reishi thinking that it was helping me sleep. And I, I think when I take it during the daytime, it somehow regulates my circadian rhythm. I used to take this with coffee even at a small dose of one eighth of a teaspoon. And this brand is really good, I highly recommend it. And it seemed to regulate my circadian rhythm where I just started to naturally fall asleep before midnight and wake up at eight in the morning. But what induces sleep, especially if you're a shift worker, which is what got me to sort of take this in the first place, is ashwagandha powder. And I've talked many times about this. So I take a whole teaspoon of this and usually within 30 minutes to an hour puts me to sleep. And you know, the ashwagandha works so well that I could be on my cell phone, like reading a book or reading some articles or whatever, and this will still put me to sleep, even though I'm like on my cell phone. So that's very powerful. Like I'll just naturally like want, like I won't even be, I won't be able to ignore the urge to sleep. So. That's what I was using before, but I wanted to switch to GABA because I felt like the taking these neurotransmitters right away would just uh, directly would induce sleep in a more powerful and effective manner, but I was mistakenly wrong. Uh, I do think taking a, a credible theanine supplement will help to induce sleep uh, in that powerful way, and I'm pretty sure taking ashwagandha alongside theanine would probably be very optimal. So, yeah, this experiment has showed me that um, you know, glycine and GABA, probably not the best thing. Um, I have also had good results with kava. So I've had good results with other, you know, GABA 
ex inducing, you know, GABA expressing herbs and things. I've used this um, valerian and with passion flower. It's a four to one extract, and um, this is a local brand. I never really had amazing results with valerian, but that's. But then again, when I used to take valerian, when I was trying it, because I haven't really given it an honest try since like 2012, 2013, and that was before I really started to really understand how to use herbs properly. So I might give this a go again and see how it works. Um, but if I just allow my brain to regulate for a while and I get keto adapted again, I probably won't really, you know, have a huge need for supplements. Another thing that really helped um, is uh, certain types of green tea. Now it's hit or miss, um, but uh, this in particular green tea, this is a pretty cheap gunpowder green, and uh, it gets you—it gets you so tea drunk that you just kind of like feel like you could fall asleep, you know, and green tea is a huge source of theanine and also some of the, um, the polyphenols in green tea induce brain derived neurotropic factor and enhance the effects of theanine all in a similar fashion. And so I think getting tea drunk enough to fall asleep uh, actually gives me rather amazing sleep. And that's actually something that I used to do when I first started to get success with my health back in early 2000, like late 2014, early 2015, is I just got so damn tea drunk. I would drink really strong black and green tea and it would put me to sleep. So, and actually right now I'm drinking a, um, my morning coffee is actually one tablespoon of ground coffee, two tablespoons of black tea, loose leaf, of course, um, you know, some whey protein and uh, two tablespoons of maca, some raw cacao powder, and I'm feeling pretty damn good from these polyphenols as well. So maybe getting tea drunk if you can, but the thing is people are scared. They don't know how to make tea right. They're scared of the caffeine content. Anyway, let me know what you think down below in the comments, and I'll talk to you all next time.